Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. How is everybody doing? Thank you so much for joining us. We are the Omega Kappa chapter, and I want to just say a huge thank you to my team who has quickly agreed to assist us with having this wonderful session this evening. It's about nursing, a profession of choice. Is it what you'd like to do? Do you have an idea? Are you a little bit interested? And if so, then this is the place for you to hear. Today, we are um, reaching out to our high school students so they can have a bit more information to make a really great informed decision on joining nursing as their profession of choice. My name is Cheryl Garrix Lloyd. I am the president of the Omega Kappa chapter of Sigma. We are a local chapter, the only local chapter situated at the UE School of Nursing, Mona. And we are our honor society of nursing students and nursing leaders. And so I think we may know a little bit about what's happening in this profession. So before we get into our program, I know our students will be joining us and they're joining us on our YouTube channel. So if you are over here joining us on YouTube, we ask you to send us, give us your school motto and let's see if we can see what school you're from. Listen attentively and carefully because we do have some information to share that you will want to really hear. All right. So as we are preparing to get into it, I want you to know we have a group of persons who will be sharing with you a little bit about what's required of you to consider even joining a nursing program at all. We'll be talking to you a little bit about what's nursing school like um, from the lecturer's perspective, from this perspective of the nursing students. And then we'll be talking to you a little bit about what do we expect of you when you become a nursing student. And then we'll have um, representatives from our schools of nursing in Jamaica, giving you a quick idea about their school of nursing. And why would you maybe want to join one of these schools of nursing, and then we are going to open the floor so that you are able to respond to us and give us your questions and your answers. So I had a quick game I wanted, if anybody's over here, those who are joining us and presenting, you may participate too, if you so wish. I'll give you one minute to get paper. Everybody needs to have a paper or a notepad. Anybody remembers the game? ABC fast or slow, or boy, girl, animal, play something. Who knows that game? All right. I think all of us perhaps play that game in high school. Well, I'm assuming it's still being played. I don't know. But I'm giving you 30 more seconds to get your pencil and your paper. All right. Everybody ready with their pencil and paper? 30 more seconds. We're going to be looking out in the YouTube chat for the responses. We are going to maybe do just three quick rounds and then we will want to see if people are up and running with the answers. Who is going to be doing the ABC fast or so? Do I have any volunteers in my Zoom room, please? Really quickly. Anybody? Marvet, I'm picking on you. Yes, ma'am. Or Melissa. Perfect. Ready? All right. So we're going to go. Everybody knows the game, right? I hope I remember. <laughs> Everybody has but their paper. See. So we are going to have five columns. We could throw in number six. And the first one is going to be boy. Second one, girl. Animal. Place. Thing. And the last one is going to be country. We're all ready. And so if we have our paper and we're ready, then we're now going to be saying ABC, fast or slow. So Marvitz, I'm going to be asking you, ABC, fast or slow. Marvitz, you're still over here? Yes, I'm, I'm here. I can't, I don't, what should I do now at this point? So you I need to tell me, am I to do the ABC fast or slow? Oh, fast. You should tell fast, me if it's fast. 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 All right, so tell me when to go, tell me when to stop. Go ahead. Stop. L. All okay. right, so quickly go right across L. So put out your chat and we're going to do them real quick. And then at the end, we will see who may have what. Just real quick to get us in the frame of mind. Thirty seconds, and I'm timing you. Thirty seconds is going. Finish. 
I'm finished. <laughs> All right. Anybody over on YouTube? Are you finished with L already? 30 seconds is done. All right. Ready again. Melissa, your turn. ABC, fast or slow? Slow. All right. Am I to go? Go. Stop. C. Let's go. 30 seconds is going, going, going. Thirty seconds is done. Perfect. We have one more set to go. How are you doing over there on YouTube? Everybody's getting it. Last one. Javon, your turn. ABC, fast or slow? Go, Becky T. We see you. Javon? Javon, we lost you. Kim, are you here with us? Madam, Mrs. Sarah Nash, you here with us? Present. All right. Should I do ABC fast or slow? Fast. All right. Am I to go? Start. Stop. S. Last oh. one. Let's go. 30 seconds. S. Let's go. Who is getting all the S's? Let's see really quickly. Did you say S or S? S, as in snake. So 30 seconds going. Let's see what you come up with. How are you doing over there on YouTube? If you are just joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are quickly doing a game to get us in the frame of mind of ABC fast or slow. We did L, then we did C. Now we're doing S and the time is up. So... This is the request. Put your answers in the chat and let us see if anybody has anything that anybody else didn't have. You know how it goes when we've crossed out and crossed out, then we may see who is the winner. Thank you for participating. So to get us started off this evening, we will be having our member, Mrs. Stacey Anita Chambers, who's joining us. She lectures at the UWE Western Campus in Montego Bay, but she's one of our creative nurses and she's a poet well i don't know if you think she's a poet i think she is and so i'm inviting her to just give us one of her items that she's written to start our evening off before we get into the meat of the matter over to you mrs nita chambers thank you mrs garrix lloyd so this poem is entitled who are you a patient's perspective the way you look you adorn yourself like an angel. The dignity and pride you exude is enthralling. Your smile transmits electrical signals to my nerve endings. The gratification your kind words bring is empowering. I see you in the morning. I see you at night. Your sacrifice, your, you sacrifice your rest to ensure I keep the fight. You never seem tired. You make the most difficult task seem light. You emulate <clears throat> nightingale. Yes, you carry a bright light. The strength you exude, sorry, as we battle various illnesses, you stand with us. You sit with us. You gently hold our hands. You sojourn with us and help us to carry on. When we are too tired to breathe, you fearlessly show us that all hope is not gone. You bring a sense of hope that brings relief. But who are you? The wealth of knowledge you possess, I am empowered to live my best. A superhero, a teacher, a leader, you are more than words can express. But who are you is a question in the air. The nurse responds, I am a nurse extraordinaire. Madam Desia, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am a nurse extraordinaire. 
you are a nurse extraordinaire. Thank you so much. We want to just thank uh, Mrs. Nita Chambers. She is so awesome at writing. We're waiting on the book. All right, so let's get into the meat of the matter. This is how we will be um, having our session this evening, and then we will be closing off with getting all your questions and your answers, just in case you didn't get it answered in the presentations. So we'll be starting off. I will tell you who my colleagues are and their presentations with Mrs. Sandra Chisholm Ford. She is a lecturer at the UE School of Nursing from the Mona campus in Kingston. And she'll be talking to you a little bit about what are the requirements from the Nursing Council of Jamaica. So the Nursing Council of Jamaica governs all the nursing programs. They are the ones who approve our curricula. And so the requirements, regardless of what school you are applying to, it remains the same. And then she'll be followed by Mrs. Kimari Serenash, who also lectures at the U School of Nursing, Mona. And she'll be talking to you a little bit about what to expect when you get into nursing school, if you get into nursing school, because some of us may not be as sure just right now. And then we'll have Mrs. Marvet Waite, who's also from the School of Nursing on the Mona campus. That is where our chapter is situated. And she'll be talking to us a little bit about what do we as your future teachers and colleagues expect of you when you join the nursing programs. And then we'll have two students who will be sharing with us. We'll have Miss Alicia Vickers, who is our reigning nursing student of the year from the Brownstone Community College School of Nursing, telling us a little bit about what nursing school has been like so far and that will maybe guide you or prepare you for getting into nursing school. Then we have Mr. Javon Gray, who is graduated he has graduated, my apologies, from the U.S. School of Nursing, Mona, in November of last year. He's completing the final lap to be licensed to practice. And he'll tell you a little bit about what his experience was as a nursing student. And then we will have our schools of nursing giving us a little bit about themselves, who they are, and maybe why you'd want to consider one or the other. Um, and just for information, maybe if you didn't know, then you'll be recognizing who our schools of nursing are. So from the Brownstone Community College School of Nursing, we'll have Dr. Donna Bonaman. From the Excelsior Community College School of Nursing, we'll have Ms. Colleen Campbell. From the Knox Community College School of Nursing, we'll have Mrs. Lilith Denton-Smith. From the Northern Caribbean University, that's the highest in Chen School of Nursing, we'll have Dr. Joy Williams-Little. Um, from the Caribbean School of Nursing at the University of Technology, we'll have Mrs. Karen Jones Fraser. And from the UE School of Nursing, Mona, we'll have Miss Melissa Walker. Then we'll have Mr. Kevin Allen, who is a member of our chapter and a mental health nurse practitioner, taking us into the question and answer session. Before we ask Mrs. Chisholm Ford to come, we just want to say hello and acknowledge our head of school from the UE School of Nursing, Dr. Dawn Monroe. Dr. Mono, if you don't mind waving at us, that would be quite fine. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. This is really exciting. I am telling you, nursing is the best profession that you could ever think of choosing. It's the best place to be. If I had to live my life over again, I would be <laughs> a nurse. And I'm really thrilled, um, Madam President, that we are having this exposition of our noble, and the treasured profession. I'm looking forward to this evening. Welcome. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Monroe. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so Mrs. Chisholm Ford is saying she's not getting into her computer. This is how technology works. We'll give, us, give her just a couple more minutes. And let me just find out, um, in the spirit of preparation, Mrs. Serenash, are you ready? Let me see if I can provide the able assistance you need just right now. But you could start talking to us in the interim while I operate from a technical point of view on this side. Hi, good afternoon, Omega Kappa. Good afternoon, um, future nursing students. I am ready and able to begin my presentation while we wait for Mrs. Chisholm Ford. So as soon as you have the slides up, you can project them and I'll begin. All right, I'm just moving quickly. This is what happens usually. Students prepare yourselves in real life when you're trying to move fast and technology doesn't 
cooperate with you at all. And you know, students, this is something to be prepared for because as registered nurses, you know, you could be in a community setting and they hear that, oh, um, Miss Mabel, granddaughter in nursing school, you know, call her up, come talk about something about immunization and you have to be <laughs> ready on the spot to, to give that speech, you know? So it's all about being prepared for any eventuality. All right. So it's opening, Mrs. Serenash. Let's hope it does so really quickly and then I'll be able to project for you. All right. So in the interim, just a quick reminder, thank you to our students who have joined us. We are happy to have you. Please put your motto in our chat over on YouTube. Let's see if we are able to identify your schools. Real quick game. And then you could just let us know if you realize we're not getting any of the mottos at all you could let us know what school you are joining us from. And I have to put a little bias in here. A big shout out to St. Jago High School. Yes, a I have to. A big shout out to Campion College. I see you. So we are in the finals tonight and looking forward to the showdown at 834 Schools Challenge Quiz. And so I just want to say a shout out to my, my school. All right. Looks like we're almost ready, Mrs. Serenash. All right, so let's start the screen sharing. All right, so while Mrs. Gary Exloid gets ready, my first slide would have been to introduce myself. My name is Kimari Serenash. I am a lecturer at the U.S. School of Nursing, and I also coordinate the year two students in the undergraduate program. And this evening, I'll be talking to you very briefly about what to expect in nursing school. The information I'm going to share with you is non-specific to UISON. It is applicable regardless of which nursing school you intend to apply to. Next slide, please. All right, so if you are paying attention to the news, you will know that every so often there are headlines which draw our attention to the challenges our health system is facing due to the migration of our registered nurses. This reality is very distressing, but it's not surprising because Jamaican nurses are known across the world for excellence and they demonstrate this excellence daily in caring for their patients. This excellence is cultivated, cultivated in nursing programs across the island. Local nursing schools are even assisting other Caribbean regions to improve their offerings. Nursing schools are also partnering with international organizations such as the WHO and the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario to ensure that we continue to deliver a robust program which will prepare future nurses to meet the challenges with confidence and excellence. Next slide, please. Good afternoon, Miss. What's the motto for NCU? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mrs. Garrick said, if yes, right, world class educators. You serious? Find out, find out, and tell me somewhere where learning never ends. All right, so world class education requires world class educators. Do I need to say any more? But just in case I do, the only other thing to add here is that in nursing school, we teach you how to fish rather than always giving you a fish. So be prepared to seek out information on your own. And don't worry, before we send you to look for the information, we will teach you where and how to find the information. And the rest is up to you. Next slide, please. Now, should you decide to enter any nursing program in Jamaica, expect an intellectual challenge. Nursing school can be exciting and rewarding, but it is not a walk in the park. 
You will be exposed to learning experiences that will challenge you to think creatively and critically. Be prepared to engage in several hours of self-directed work on a daily basis. Your engagement in learning does not end when the timetabled classes end for the day. It requires constant self-directed engagement. Next slide, please. No, there's a lot to be said here. Many candidates enter nursing schools straight from high school or very soon after that. With that comes the need for schools of nursing to ensure that students have the required attitudes to excel as registered professional nurses, emphasis on professional. Knowledge and skills are important, but attitudes are equally important. If, for example, your lecturer notices that you're often late for classes and you've been absent from several ward assignments without notice or excuse, expect to be spoken to. Too often, candidates enter the nursing program and they believe that, oh, I'm an adult, I'm in, a, I'm in a university program, so I can do as I please without any consequences. Not so for your nursing program. Every learning experience in nursing school is geared towards ensuring that you can function effectively as a registered, registered professional nurse. So think about it. If we allow you to go through nursing school without ever addressing your lack of punctuality, this will carry over to your professional practice. Five minutes can mean the difference between if someone lives or dies. A short, tight uniform can prevent you from effectively resuscitating a dying patient. So we try to cultivate certain behaviors and attitudes while you're in the program. Next slide, please, professional networking. So nursing is a daily exercise in teamwork. So in nursing school, you can expect to be engaged in a lot of group activities. When you begin your clinical education, even as students, this teamwork, this teamwork is necessary. Use your time in nursing school to get to know your classmates and know how to work well with them. Use your time in nursing school to also get to know students from other disciplines, healthcare and otherwise, because when you become registered nurses, they will be your teammates. Teamwork is extremely important in nursing school because it is extremely important for your successful practice as a registered professional nurse. Next slide, please. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. I really try to keep it tight because we know I know we're um, stretched for time. So I want to thank you for your attention this evening and I'll be happy to take any questions at the end of the segment. Thank you, Mrs. Gary Floyd. Thank you so much, Mrs. Sarah Nash. That was really great. And um, just a little peek into what's really going to happen because all of those points can be expounded on for a whole lot longer. So thank you so very much. Um, and we're going to be moving just down to Mrs. Morbett Waite. Um, as Mrs. Susan Ford continues to just quickly try to iron out the technical challenges and we will see how soon it can be resolved and just a little reshuffling, it requires flexibility as well. Um, Mrs. Susan Ford, are you able to or just should you go ahead with Mrs. Wade since she's ready? I, uh, my computer seems to have given up the ghost. I'm working from my phone. <laughs> so. Oh. I won't be able to project, but um, if they are able to write, and there's, uh, these are nursing, prospective nursing students, as Mrs. Serenash said, they should be prepared for all the challenges that is in their all right. practice. Agreed. So I'll ask you to go right after Mrs. Waite, who will be talking to them a little bit about what we expect of them when they join our nursing programs. Over to you, Mrs. Waite. Okay, thank you, Madam President, Mrs. Garrix Lloyd. Um, do I have permission to share my slides? Yes, you do, Mrs. Wade. Okay, one moment, please. Good afternoon, everyone. And while I bring my slides up, I want to especially welcome, um, can you see, okay, um, transition slideshow. 
Are you seeing my slides? Yes, we are. You are? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start from this very first slide. One moment, please. Okay. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. I want to extend a special welcome to our future nursing students who are here this afternoon. These are high school students. Thank you for taking the time to join us this afternoon. I know you must have had a very tiring day, but thank you for taking the opportunity that presented itself this afternoon for you to join us and to become a part of this in, um, event. This particular event is for you. And like my colleague, Mrs. Serenash said um, earlier in her presentation, um, she shared what it is that you should expect from the nursing school. But at this time, I want to talk to you about what it is that we are expecting from you or future nursing students, what it is that you will need to bring to us when you join the nursing school, especially um, what it is that we want to, to get from you as you join our nursing school. So the very first one we wanna talk about, and it may seem um, the usual, your mental and physical health is very important. We want you to come to us, having that ability to endure the first, not the first, the four years of nursing school, or it could be more depending on whether or not you put your all into it, but our programs are four years. And so we need you to be in very good health, both physically and mentally to endure those four years. And these four years are used you know, for your studying, to prepare for your classwork, your final exams, your mid-semester exams, your clinical rotation. And this is you know, when you're assigned to the different healthcare facilities, like your hospitals and your health centers, to take care of the patients, to visit different agencies and homes, even within your community, as well as all the other activities that you will be involved in, such as volunteering in service clubs, sporting events, etc. Because we are in the business, our nursing schools are in the business of training well-rounded nurses. We are not only about academics, we are also about getting you to be well-rounded citizens and to play your part and to, you know, um, allow our profession to shine. So we want you to be mentally and physically ready for when you get here to put your all into being successful. The second thing we want you to bring to us, you see this little man on the left here being very passive. We don't want that. Neither do we want you to be on the very far right to being aggressive. We want you to be somewhere right here in the middle, be assertive. That is what we will expect and want from our nursing students. And so we are expecting you to come to us, you know, self-assured, be confident in yourself without being aggressive. It's okay to be, you know, confident and bold, but we don't want you to be aggressive. We want you to share your ideas and your opinions with us, challenge us in the classroom and even in the clinical space, coming from an evidence-based position where you come to us and say, Miss, you know, you said something in class yesterday. I'm not quite agreeing with it because in my further reading, this is what I found. And you bring the information to us without being aggressive. You are being assertive, self-assured. We want you to ask your questions boldly don't, we don't want you to be intimidated by us. We want you to ask your questions and you can disagree with us if you must, but we want you to do so, like I said before, from an informed posi position and to do so respectfully. Respect the opinions of your other classmates who are there who may not share the information that you have. So be respectful. So in a sense, all I'm saying to you, you still have some time, you may be in third, fourth or fifth form, you still have some time before you get to us as nursing students. So we want you to be assertive in your disposition. The next quality that we're looking for, and you see bright and bold right there, we want you to be organized. We are expecting students to come to us with some level of being organized. You are now in high school, you know, you may have your parents, you know, helping you with certain things, getting you ready for school the next day, you know, asking you about your assignment, checking up on you, et cetera. When you come to nursing school, we are expecting you to bring that level of organization with you. We want you to come to us organized. That is having the ability to focus and stay focused on the different tasks that you have to complete and to use your time and your energy, the strength and also the mental capacity that I spoke about earlier 
efficiently and effectively to get the best outcome that you possibly want. Don't feel disheartened that you may not yet have what is it that I'm speaking about, because there's still time for you to develop these, these skills and these qualities that I'm speaking about. There is still time for you to become organized. There is always room for improvement, but we want to come to us with something for us to work with and to work on. We want to mentor you into developing a little bit more of these skills that you're going to be coming and, and these abilities that you're going to be coming to us with. So we want to see students who are organized come to class on time, read ahead of time, do some post reading, analyze what it is that you would have written in class, come, to, come back to class with some questions, you know, to clarify certain points. And you will have a number of courses that you are going to be um, involved in. We want you to come to us having read upon some of the topics before and ask your questions Questions. Have your assignments ready on time, Set, submit them on time, pre present yourself to the clinical area on time, commit to being organized. So that was number three. The fourth thing I want to do, and it's clearly written here on the slide, we want team players. We want students who are teachable, students who are energized, bunny, like Jenny, Jenny, we want you to be energetic, and that's why I spoke earlier about the mental and physical health. We want achievers to come to us and those who are mission focused. You want to be a nurse. Your passion is to be a nurse. You come to us ready and prepared to get the information we're providing with you, get the necessary skills, the professionalism, and all of that. We want you to focus on the mission at hand. So as nursing students, while you're in the classroom, you'll be working in groups. You will be working in groups, and so be prepared for becoming a team player or presenting yourself as a team player. Even in the clinical area, you'll be working on the healthcare team where you'll have doctors and other professionals working. So you will be part of the team taking care of patients. And so you'll have to actively participate in the group, complete your task on time, you know, giving feedback to your team members and to be respectful of the effort that others would have put into the work. And overall, we want you to do your part to ensure that your team is successful. So come to us with some of these as team players. And this very important quality that we are looking for, communication. We want students who have good communication skills. Students who will be able to speak and speak coming from a professional point of view. Yes, be reminded that your communication skills will also involve listening, active listening, speaking and observing. It is also helpful for you to understand the difference in how you communicate when you're face to face, when you're writing an email, when you're having a telephone conversation with your classmates, when you're having a telephone conversation with your, with your lecturers. There are different ways to communicate. As well as if you're communicating digitally, Social media is what jumps to mind. And as, as I speak about social media, I want to use this opportunity to remind you students that you, whatever you're writing and whatever you're posting on social media platform these days, whether it's Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, or whatever else that I'm not quite sure about, because those are the ones I'm very familiar with, you are leaving a footprint. You are telling your story. And these posts that you make can be retrieved, can be accessed years after you would have made them. And those post messages will be telling your story. So you need to be very careful about what you communicate on the platform. When you're writing your lecturers, be very mindful of how you communicate with them. You start with a greeting, you talk about exactly what it is in a very short manner and get to the point and then you end by wishing them all the best, et cetera. And you close off with your appropriate name and title. All right, so be respectful in your communication. And the very last thing I wanna talk about and it's right there, it has to do with ethics. I left this here because I wanted to remember it as I'm speaking about it last. The others are also very important, but this particular one, as it relates to ethics, we wanted to come here to us at the nursing school, bringing some morals with you, some integrity, honor, being trustworthy, being responsible, being accountable. Yes, you may not have all of these at this time, like I said before, but we have the opportunity to help you to develop, develop them and to maintain them. And I just want to say here that there is a, an American poll, which is called the Gallup's Annual Most Honest and Ethical Profession Poll. In the January 2022 release of that poll, it was cited that nursing was again ranked the most trustworthy and honest profession in the US. And this is for the 20th, 
2-0, the 20th consecutive year that nursing has made the top position on this list. And this is a list that constitutes doctors, school teachers, pharmacists, and other healthcare professionals. And so therefore, future nursing students, I'm closing off by saying this, we want students who are honest, truthful, accountable, no matter the consequences. We want to continue this tra tradition of being notified or being identified rather as the most trustworthy and honest profession. And so I'm imploring you, you still have some time before you decide you want to come to nursing school, you're getting the necessary academic qualifications in place, but we want, I want you to remember these that I spoke about this afternoon. All these qualities we are looking for plus more, but these are the ones I wanted to bring to your attention today. And so after saying all of what I just said, I leave you with this. Is nursing the right career, the right profession for you at this time? And I want to thank you for your undivided attention. It's over to you, Madam President. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much, Mrs. Waite. Students, I know you're over there and you're writing your little questions down. You may be putting them in the chat. Don't put them in there just yet in case we'll lose it. I want to welcome those who may have joined after. Thank you, Mrs. Wade, because I hope they were listening. We should have a pop quiz, you know, there needs to be a prize. So I hope they were paying attention to what you have been saying and to Mrs. Serenash before. In fact, I would like to hope they heard the poem from Mrs. Nita Chambers. All right, so moving right along, Mrs. Susan Ford, how are you doing? Are we ready? Okay, my internet at home still isn't functioning, so I still have to go from my phone. I will not be able to project my screen, and I didn't send it to anyone. But in the meantime, I want to thank everybody who had taken the time out to join us, all our prospective nursing students. And I want to thank you for thinking of nursing as a career as it is a very, very bold move. But in order to start your journey, there are certain things that must be in place. And of course, that is your academic qualifications. And what do you need to become a member of the nursing profession in Jamaica? The, unlike other professions that requires you to have CAPE, there is no such stipulation for nursing. If you do have CAPE, that is okay, but the minimum requirements are five CSEC or GCE subjects. However, there are four that are compulsory and the four compulsory subjects must be achieved at grades one or two. We do not accept grade threes in any of the four compulsory subjects and they are mathematics, English language, biology, chemistry, or physics. And for mathematics, mathematics for qualification would be any of the mathematics subjects, whether it's pure math, CSEC, GCE math, or it could also be your um, additional mathematics. All of us know what English language is. That must either be at a grade one or two. Biology can be human and social biology or straight biology at grades one or two. Chemistry, grade one or two, or physics. So you, it must be math, English, biology, those three, and either of the two, chemistry or physics. There is an, a requirement for a fifth subject, and we have a list of subjects that you can choose any of the other from, and any of these others could be at a grade three. And they are agricultural science, which is either a double or single unit, biology, 
the Ca Caribbean history, economics, English literature or literatures in English, environmental science, food, nutrition and health, French or modern languages, geography, history, human and social biology, information technology or computer science or computer studies, integrated science, music, physical education, principles of accounts, principles of business or management of business, religious education, social studies or Caribbean studies or sociology, or it could also be Spanish or modern languages. And these are all at the CXC or CSEC or CAPE levels. At the GCE or A levels, we accept accounts, business studies, English literature, food and nutrition, French, geography, history, human and social biology, information technology, psychology, religious education or Bible knowledge or Spanish. And it is very important to note that if you are using your CAPE subjects for qualification for nursing, you must be successful in both units. Units one and two at grades one to four. We do accept agricultural science in double or single units, but for anything else, it must be both units, grades one to four. The Nursing Council of Jamaica um, is the body, the regulatory body that regulates nursing education in Jamaica. They are the ones who has stipulated the requirements for the nursing program. And as prospective nursing students, you need to know what the Nursing Council of Jamaica is. So the Nursing Council of Jamaica, as I just said, regulates nursing education as well as nursing practice. So all of you, if you, or when I should say, because after this awesome presentation, I'm sure you're all going to start your applications. So when you become nursing students, you will be required by the Nursing Council of Jamaica to be indexed and that is you'll be getting a number that says that you are qualified to use the name student nurse. So as we progress, um, you will be reminded of the qualifications as I think Mrs. Garrett Lloyd has displayed the Nursing Council of Jamaica's website. You can feel free to visit the website for any additional information that you may need. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Mrs. Chisholm Ford. Sean brightly through despite the fact that you're having the challenges. Yes, I was sharing the site for the nursing council. I will also just go right ahead and put the link in the YouTube chat. And I want to thank you. So as we move quickly ahead, I have two quick presentations for you. What is it like in the life of a nursing student? So they say we are a society of chivalry, although people think it's dead. So of course, we're having our female student present first and that she will be followed by uh, Mr. Gray. So Miss Alicia Vickers, who is our nursing student of the year, um, and she's from the Brownstone Community College School of Nursing. We invite you, Alicia, to go right ahead and give us your synopsis of your experience to date and what will help our future nursing students be ready when they get in. And then we'll have Javon coming in right after you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you, Ms. Cheryl Darius Lloyd. Um, I must say 
I am happy to have our students joining us today, um, our prospective nursing students. I must thank you all for taking time out to be with us this evening to share with you some of the experiences of nursing school. I'm currently, a, I'm, my name is Alicia Vickers and I'm currently a fourth year nursing student of the Brownstone Community College of Nursing. And you know, boy, what a journey it has been. As a student, it is imperative that a certain level of discipline is developed from the day you decide that you're here. I'm assuming that nursing is at least one of the party careers for you later on in the future and which is very short i'm assuming if you are even if you're in grade seven and you're joining us you you have enough time to settle yourself with this career i decided i'm a nurse from i was in grade four actually so that's what you know that's primary school so um, it's it's a journey that you 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 want to embrace from now, right? Um, in order for you to be successful in this journey, it will take a lot of hard work and dedication, and I must say even sleepless nights, especially when you have assignments com to complete, you have your coursework, you have your presentations, and then you know at the end of the semester, you have your final exams. It's really a lot of work. And so it is imperative that you develop that level of dedication and discipline from now. Um, I had to, to get into it um, with that mindset that this is what I want to do and I have to complete this in four years. And I'm just going to tell myself that I'm going to just push forward even when the road is rough. As I'm telling you, know, sometimes you get tired, like really tired, and you don't know, you know, if this is what you want. But if it is something that is embedded in you, then you know that you you're you're gonna have to just continue on. I had to gain strength from praying, right? So that that has been my source of um, supporting myself throughout this nursing career these uh, almost four years. Um, I had friends who would support me also. And they have been a tall strength, even at my lowest point. You know, as my school motto, um, I don't know if anyone is here from St. Catherine High, it says that um, your um, prayer and work conquers all. And, you know, that is what I've been living by in order to complete this uh, journey. Um, from Brownstone Community College, I can say that the, the, the lecturers are very supportive of um, the students. Um, they're committed to service as their motto states. And I can attest to the fact because they're, they're, they have a team of very, you know, very supportive staff members. And Dr. Bonneman, I think, is here also, who is um, currently our assistant vice um, principal at the college, but she is the um she was the head of the nursing school right so she she can tell you that she she has had to you know be that point for us also when it seems as if you know we, we can't go on so you have to have persons who are very supportive of you and the the staff member they render their assistance and they of course impart a lot of wisdom in order for us to know how to operate as you know nursing students and also to operate as a registered nurse when the time comes um it definitely drives us to at least for me it drives me to to know what my true potentials are and that is how i even ended up you know being a part of uh, the nursing student of the year competition from the nurses association of jamaica which i was successful in year 2021 2022 so of course i'll be giving up that crown this july and you can also um be a part of that uh, as you go along in your nursing career nursing student career um but while while you know i can talk about how hard it is to be a nursing student and the, the amount of work I will also impart on you, you know, uh, the the essence of 
achieving that 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 sense of you know satisfaction when you know that you have done all that work and your hand and your heart and your mind is in caring for someone that they can say to you you know thank you and you feel like yes you have done something for that person so healing hands healing hearts are what we you know what you are to strive for at the end of the day so don't yes it's going to be hard work and yes it's going to take a lot of discipline but also think of the satisfaction of caring for that person who will need you in their lowest times i must say thank you because that could be very brief thank you so much for joining i look forward to even meeting some of you from my alma mater st catherine high and you know i i just wanted to encourage all of you take time out to read up about nursing and press the career from now. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, um, Madam Alicia. I want to say a very special thank you to because I know you're not feeling so great. So thank you for joining us and imparting your two words of wisdom, you know, and I just have to say, boy, when you say St. Catherine, I met my heart fell. I'm like, seriously, Yandi? other side of St. Catherine but we both know what that's about when you go to St. Catherine and St. Diego High School <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing <laughs> Javon <laughs> Javon over to you let me just get your PowerPoint up alright All right. so good afternoon everyone so my name is Javon Gray, and I'm here to share my journey through nursing school with y'all. Um, I also want to welcome persons from the Ochoa's High School, that's my alma mater. I hope there are persons there joining and listening. Um, nursing, a profession of choice, and my journey, right? Now, the journey was never an easy one but it was a great experience right now to to be um to to want to become a nurse it's a great thing it's a noble profession and i really and truly advise persons that are planning to the preparation starts from now right your character your personal character everything it starts from now it's not a case that you just jump up and say oh i want to do nursing no, you have to start in preparation. So your good grades from school and your personal life outside of school, right? Because one of the things that uh, Mrs. Wade has mentioned pertaining to what we post on Facebook and stuff like that on the social media is a thing that we can find it anytime and it doesn't go away. And those things stay in, stay in your character and you want to ensure that you have a clean record going into a noble profession. Next slide, please. So here I have two pictures. So one, this one is from second year. And the final one on the right is my graduation, graduation picture. All right, next slide. So how did I get from first year to that stage where I am now a graduate? So my nursing journey. All right, so I'm just going to use these emojis to explain the journey so at as you can see where you have those columns you know you need a ladder to move up the next step and as you go by go day by day sometimes those ladders disappear you can't reach you need other methods to climb the stages all right now you have the emoji with the hands the prime emoji no, you want to ensure that you have God at the center. For me, I started out nursing school on a journey with God. I'm from a um, strong Christian background. And trust me, when I was leaving for nursing school, you know, when I went to church, they sent me off in prayer and everything. And you want to keep that. You want to ensure that your the spiritual level of things is well intact so that any little distraction, you just know, say, hey, if the friends and family not here, you have God can go to. All right. Now we're looking at the books. Now throughout nursing school, 
it's a it's a tedious process. You constantly have to be in the boat, right? There are leeway for fun, but at the end of the day, if you want to be successful, you have to pay keen attention to the book. It's one of the things that you are reading for your degree. So it's not where you can get everything from class, but after class finish, there's this part where you have to do for yourself, right? So it's self-directed learning. You have to do this on your own, right? You have to take up the initiative to finish and complete stuff on your own without um, the lecturers or without the lecturers telling you to do so. Um, you will have a lot of sleepless nights. So you have a sleep in the mode. You will have a lot of sleepless nights. But it is very important to get some rest, right? I had I have times where I'm up all night trying to complete stuff. It is not healthy, but sometimes based on how you prioritize things, then you need to ensure that throughout the nursing journey, ensure that you're on point. Have a timetable that can structure to accommodate academic, outside of academic, so that you are on par with your schoolwork. We have a teacup. Now, normally, persons tend to drink coffee to stay up. But for me, unfortunately, coffee um, allows me to sleep. So whatever it may be that keeps you up at night, you can use it. All right. So now we have the crying emoji. There are some times that I experience tears. Sometimes it's tears, sadness, sometimes tears of joy. All right, so throughout my nursing journey, I've been, um, I've experienced a, some series of um, loss, close family members. So, you know, some morning stage, so, you know, and it has took a toll on me, but nonetheless, with good support system, you know, lecturers can um, reach out and check if you're okay and stuff like that. So the journey was not that hard as it may be during my morning state. Um, sometimes you cry because you also want to you set a particular goal, but you haven't achieved it. And, you know, it brings tears to you. One of the things, tears of joy. You know, you had set out a particular goal. Now you have been successful in that goal, right? And you want to, you want to just show, you want to be encouraged, you know? You just want to feel that sense of joy. And sometimes it's just tears. Um, we, in this society, well, Jamaican society, we say a real man don't cry, but hey, trust me, we do cry. Um, we go to, we have the hospital, we have an injection needle, and we have um, something looking like a tablet. Now, through the journey, you have learned a lot of stuff, how to give out, how to administer medication, how to oral medication, how to give injection, the most I am intramuscular medication, right? And during the clinical aspect at the hospital, you learn a lot of stuff, right? Sometimes you learn, I learn a lot from my patients, right? Because sometimes you have patients that are, patients know their, know their um, sickness, know their symptom, know their feeling. And no matter what you might think, and you go through nursing school, you can, you can understand a patient feeling, but you can't really tell that, hey, that's what they are feeling because you know, is there, they are the one that experiencing those symptoms. Now, with your knowledge, is you have to help and guide these patients to, to a healing or a comfortable position. But never try to look down on a patient. Never try to talk down on your patient. Always listen. The key word, listen, active listening. We have, so we have a muscle. Um, throughout nursing, well, throughout my nursing, throughout my nursing journey, we need this, I need the strength, right? Now, whether is it to assist a patient or the strength just to go on, just the strength to even wake up in the morning. Because sometimes, to be honest, I have an 8 o'clock class and you went to bed like late and boy, the alarm go off and all of that. You really don't even want to go to class. But hey, you have to have this level of self-discipline that this is what you want to do. And as Ms. Um, Serena said, Ms. Serena said, um, five minutes, you can't be five minutes late because that five minutes could have been used to save a patient's life. All right? 
So I just want to thank you guys for having me and all the best. We're looking forward to working with you all in your, on your nursing journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Javon. Listen to me. We need to patent this picture right here, Javon. Good summary <laughs> of what's going to be happening to us um, for our prospective students and a little bit of reminiscing <laughs> for those of us who were ahead of you in completing nursing. Thank you so much. So before we get to our Q&As, we're going to be hearing a little bit about our schools of nursing. I will want to just give you the schools we're going to be hearing and then I'll ask them to go right ahead in that order. Uh, I just put you alphabetically, that's what all it was. So we are asking Dr. Bonneman to start us off from Brownstone Community College, followed by Ms. Campbell from Exed, Mrs. Denton-Smith from Knox, followed by Dr. Little, and then Mrs. Jones-Fraser from the University of Technology, and closing out will be Ms. Walker from UWE. So over to you, Dr. Bonneman. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Gariks Lloyd. Greetings from the Brownstone Community College School of Nursing family once more. You heard from Alicia Vickers, and I'll just build on that. It's really a pleasure to participate in this webinar and to be with you this afternoon. I'm hearing so much about nursing, and I really think that this is a magnificent effort on your part. Now you may be aware that Brownson Community College School of Nursing is the NAJ Lasco Nursing School of the Year, thanks to Alicia Vickers and Rochelle McCoy. Now a little bit more about um, Brownson Community College School of Nursing. It was founded in 2002 through the valiant efforts of our first director, Dr. Beryl Webley, Senator Syringa Marshall Burnett and Dr. Herman Hewitt, past heads of UWE School of Nursing. It is the first government generated nursing school or first government institution to offer the BSCN in nursing. Brownstone Community College is family oriented and strives to develop a culture of excellence, just like you have heard. It also strives on integrity and it's student centered. The school is situated in the cool hills of St. Anne, away from the hustle and bustle of the city and in walking distance though to the town center and to the St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital. We guide our students from inception to graduation, ensuring that our program is affordable, sound, fit for purpose. This is done through our covenant of success that both our students and our lecturers sign to ensure that the students achieve their academic goals. We have a big sister program or big brother program. We do have both males and females attending school. We also do remediation for those students who are at risk. And we hold our annual striping and award ceremony that inspires our students to achieve their very best. Our school is a world-class institution. This is evidenced by the work being done by our graduates in Jamaica and across the world also evidenced by our low attrition rates and our excellent passes. May I add that our last set of graduates last year, 50% of our graduates achieved first class honors. Thank you so much for listening and do make Brownstone Community College School of Nursing your place to study. Thank you so much, Dr. Bonneman. Over to you, Ms. Campbell. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cheryl Garrix Lloyd. Good afternoon, everyone, or should I say good evening? My name is Colleen Campbell, and I am 
a proud graduate of Excelsior Community College, where I have been serving as the assistant head of school. Now, our program started in 1974. Mrs. Lloyd, if you'll allow me to share. You may go right ahead. Thank you. So our School of Nursing and Allied Health is located at 137 Mountain View Avenue, just down the road from University of the West Indies. Our current program, this is what the entrance to our, pro, our, our school looks like. We are a School of Nursing and Allied Health, meaning we provide not just nursing programs, but we also offer allied health programs. On our main campus located at 137 Mountain View Avenue, we have our Bachelor of Science degree program. That is a franchise program from the University of the West Indies. We also have our assistant nursing program, which is on our campus in St. Thomas. Now, our school is the first of its kind in the Caribbean that is located in a community college. And our pioneer group was in 1974. Our I'm sorry, program... sorry, Colleen, just one quick second. I know you, we can see the thing on the side, but the side isn't actually moving. So I'm not sure if you're moving no? it. No. I'm sorry. That's all right. We're at the diploma program being the first of its kind in the Caribbean, but we're only seeing it on the side. Okay. But don't let it throw you off. If it doesn't move, just go right ahead. No, that's fine. Okay, so our program, we had the, we started off as a diploma program. And then in the 1980s, we had a completion degree with the University of Miami. However, because of the prevailing slide of the Jamaican dollar, that program did not become viable after time. Then we had a franchise agreement in 2004 with the University of the West Indies. And that program is currently the one we have. We also had a completion degree program and we collaborated with the University of Technology for this program. Now, our school boasts of having small class, class sizes. We have mature students as a diverse um, set of students. Our passes are very good. We have very friendly, well-qualified staff who are very accommodating. We have counseling services or students are very much involved in college life. We have students who serve even on national teams up to recently, and we have a very robust curriculum. And we must say that we have a good relationship with all the schools of nursing in Jamaica. And our most recent success is ISO 9001-2015 certification, which we received on the 28th of February this year, which speaks to the quality of the program that we offer here at Excelsior. And so I just want to encourage all our prospective um, nurses to make Excelsior one of the schools of choice as we all become colleagues at the end of the day. So make nursing your career of choice. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Campbell. Thank you so very much. Um, over to you, Mrs. Denton-Smith. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy that you could all join this afternoon in sharing with our students about this noble profession called nursing. I am from Knox Community College. And Knox Community College came into being in the year 1975. It is in affiliation with the United 
Church of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. We boast of four campuses, one in Spalling, Clarendon, one in Cobbler, Manchester, one in Manivore, Manchester, and the other in Maypen. We are situated in the cool, cool hills of Manchester, where our nursing campus is on the Cobbler campus. We boast of our success over the years with our students being sought after in the various hospitals, both locally and internationally. We have a big sister and big brother program because we are small in number. We are only allowed to take 50 students per year by the nursing council. Therefore, we are small in number, so we are very, very united. And on screen, you're seeing the students all decked out in their blue and white, and they look immaculate. Now, our program is very, very affordable, so it is well sought after. Each year, we get over 200 applicants, but we can only take 50 of those. We also offer boarding facility at the institution. The institution also, we run two programs in the nursing department, um, rather three programs, sorry. We do the assistant nursing program, which lasts for two years, the bachelor of science in nursing in collaboration with the University of the West Indies, which lasts for four years. And we also have the allied health program. Now the students are brilliant students. They perform well, they are top students, and we can boast of our um, participation in the LASCO, NAJ LASCO School of the, um, Student Nurse Competition over the years. We have won three times. We have been um, four-time winner in the, as the School of the Year. Also, the students, we, last year, just last year, we had 38 students graduating, and out of the 38, we got 10 first class honors. And while those students sat the RNR licensing exam with the Nursing Council of Jamaica, we had 91% pass. So, students listening on, Knox should be your choice because it is affordable. We are united, we have a strong support system, we have counselors, guidance counselors, the students are allowed to partake in several um, extracurricular activities, and of course, they practice in, this, in the hospitals that are closest to them, which is Maypen Hospital, Percy Junior Hospital, and Mandeville Hospital. So while you're there thinking, please consider Knox Community College as your school of choice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Denton-Smith. Over to you, Dr. Little. Dr. Little, we're not sure if you're muted. just as I was about to. Thank you very much, Mrs. Gary Slide, and uh, for planning such an, I would call an illuminating program that highlights nursing and nurses in this country. As a proud member of the nursing profession, I'd just like to give you a wet the appetite of these prospective students about one of our nursing schools in Jamaica, the Northern Caribbean University, whose mantra says, where learning never ends. This school of nursing is owned by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica. It is the premier and oldest institution in the Caribbean, granting a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And the Bachelor of Science in Nursing program commenced in 1970 
And since then, the department has graduated over 1,600 nurses. These graduates possess the expertise to function in a variety of healthcare settings and are gainfully employed locally, regionally, and internationally. Over the years, the Department of Nursing has maintained an outstanding pass in the registration exam or the regional exam for nurse, nurse registration. The school is housed in the Hyacin Chen building and the main campus is in, on Manchester Road in Mandeville, Jamaica, with a site called the Eastern Campus or the Kingston Campus that's on Halfway Tree Road. The website is www.ncu.edu.jm. Students or prospective students who would like more information, I invite you to visit that website. It's impossible for me to tell you all what you may want to hear this afternoon. The program offered at NCU, as has been said, it is approved by the Nursing Council, a four-year program, and each year consists of two semesters and two summers. Uh, the, the names of the, the years are a little different from the other schools because of, I guess, of its US um, origin in terms of the, the thought. <laughs> The first years are referred to as freshmen, the second years as sophomores, the third years as juniors, and the fourth years as seniors. And the courses that are offered are really three main groups. Our gen general education courses, like your English courses and your maths courses. The cognate courses, like the courses that are needed as support courses for nurses, biochemistry, and microbiology and pharmacology. And the major is nursing. And that of the 138 credits, 89 of that credit, of those credits um, relate to the major. And each nursing course has a theoretical component, a laboratory component, and a clinical component, which has been alluded to in terms of the students being assigned to the health centers and hospitals to get a hands-on experience because nursing, as we know it, is a hands-on, a practice profession. Nurse students have to maintain um, at least a 2.5 GPA in order to remain in the nursing program. That's the core courses. And they can have a minimum of two in the non-nursing courses. Our courses are arranged in sequence. It's also a spiral curriculum where there are certain foundation courses on which it's there. And then as you progress in the program, we build on these courses and refer to those that you have already completed. I haven't got much more to say right now um, because I have five minutes and I like to comply. So, the head of our school is um, Mrs. Uh, Juliet Poiser, or she has been there for two years and there's a faculty of nine persons with preceptors who are responsible for clinical teaching and supervision and the lecturers. Thank you very much, prospective students, colleagues and nurses. Thank you very much, Dr. Little. Over to you, Mrs. Jones Fraser. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cherie Gar Lloyd. -Gar Thank you, colleagues. It's a pleasure for me to join. My name is Karen Jones Fraser. I am a lecturer at the Caribbean School of Nursing, University of Technology. I would like to share a little bit about our school. Now, this um, School of Nursing is situated at various campuses at the University of Technology. The program is a part of the College of Health Sciences that was established in 2009. The, the nursing program 
was transferred from the Kingston School of Nursing and the Cornwall School of Nursing to the University of Technology within the College of Health Sciences in 2007. And it was developed as a Bachelor of Science in Nursing due to the mandate that all nursing programs should be delivered at the baccalaureate level. Now, under this restructuring, we at CSUN UTEC had two campuses, one in Kingston at Papine and the other one in Montego Bay at the Barnett campus. Since then, the Caribbean School of Nursing has further developed the name as we know it now came into being in 2012. The collaboration was with the Ministry of Health and UTEC. We have had other courses come on board. I will just name them now. The midwifery course of study, both direct and the post RM, post RN, course of study. Now the nursing degree is four years. The midwifery program is also four years. That's a direct entry. But for the persons who come in as registered nurses, they will spend two years to do their midwifery. Or if they came as, as a midwife, they can spend two years to do their, their nursing. We also have a critical care in nursing program there. And Another program that was transferred from the Ministry of Health is our Master of Science in Nurse Anesthesia. Now, it was not a master's program when it was in the ministry. However, coming to UTEC, this program was developed as a master's program. And we also, at the school, have a Master of Science in Trauma Studies and Integrative Counseling. But we just zero in on the fact that as coming out of high school, the options would be for you to do your Bachelor of Science in Nursing and your Bachelor of Science in Midwifery as direct entry level students. At the Caribbean School of Nursing, our mission is to be the leading school in the Caribbean, providing high quality evidence-based undergraduate and postgraduate nursing and midwifery education, which is student-centered, reflects global standards and meets national, regional and international needs. This will be accomplished through engaging and has been accomplished through engaging students and faculty, staff, in scholarship inquiry and scientific reasoning, interactive simulated teaching learning process and mentored clinical practice. Now, the other campuses are located, I said Kingston, Montego Bay, we have the campus at Braemar, which hosts the, the, the graduate programs. And we have a franchise with the Sigma College of Nursing and Applied Sciences in Brownstown. We have had, as was mentioned before, a completion registered nurse program at the Excelsior Community College School of Nursing and also across the Caribbean, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And those programs um, can go on as long as there are applicants. Each year, our school carries out a successful program. Students graduate with very good results. In the last year, we had 10 of our middle for students and nine of our nursing students graduate with first class honors. We also had a critical care students graduating with merits. And for the very first time, one of our students, a middle for graduate earned the president's pin. And you know, in a university, when you earn the president's pin, you are very good. Um, just to wrap up, on the Dean's List last year, 78 of our nursing and midwifery students are on the Dean's List right now being rotated on the list. And when we put that together with the other students, there were over 98 students. 
we enter the NAJ Nursing Student of the Year competition annually, and we achieve great success. Sometimes we are winners, sometimes we are runner-ups, but our students always make the final cut. We have a great environment for learning. We have graduates who are sought after, easily employed in Jamaica, in the region, and across the world. Students, we welcome you to the University of Technology, to the Caribbean School of Nursing in particular, anytime. We get many applications and we, we can take 100 in Kingston and 50 on the Montego Bay campus and additional students are placed at the franchise program at Sigma. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Fraser, over to you, Ms. Walker, as we close out our schools of nursing. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and to our prospective nursing students. Welcome, and thank you for your interest in nursing. My name is Melissa Walker. I will turn my camera on so you can see my face and then I will turn it off for just a little. My name is Melissa Walker and I am the program coordinator for the UWI School of Nursing program, the BSCN. So the UWI School of Nursing offers a PhD, a suite of master's courses, a post RN and the BSCN generic. And that is the program that we are going to be talking about. And the, the program is offered out of the Kingston, or some of you might know it as the Mona campus, and out of Montego Bay. And that's called our Western Jamaica campus. And you see the pictures, pictures there. At the top is the Western Jamaica campus. And at the bottom, the Mary Jane Sivright building is, houses the School of Nursing on the Kingston or the Mona campus. We franchise our programs to three local and two overseas programs. And you would have heard from Exed, from Excelsior, Cobbler, from the Knox Community College and from the Brownstone Community College. You would have heard from those schools before. We also franchise our programs to two overseas colleges, the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College in St. Kitts and the St. Vincent and the Grenadines College in Community College in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So the BSCN program commenced in 2002 when the certificate program was transferred from the UHWI and the UHWI is the University Hospital of the West Indies. And this was where nurses were being trained before and they were carrying this training on for 57 years. This transfer occurred because the government indicated that the Bachelor of Science should be the entry point for training registered nurses. And you would have heard some of my other colleagues from some of the other institutions mention that before. The entry qualifications, I think Mrs. Chisholm Ford went through this quite eloquently, so I will only highlight that yes, it is five CXC subjects and four of them are compulsory, just for you to remember what the compulsory subjects are, it's English language, mathematics, biology, chemistry or physics, and to remind you that the compulsory subjects must be passed at grades one or two at for CSEC and uh, grades A and B for GCE. The program structure, so it is a full-time program and that's what I want to highlight on this particular slide. It is very difficult for you to work and come to nursing school and you would have heard our students talk about the challenging program that it is. So it is a full-time program and it has a 139 credits and you do that over four academic years. The courses cover both theory and integrated clinical practice. And in year one, you will cover the foundation and support courses such as sociology, microbiology, and in years two to four, you start your nursing courses or you do both theory and clinicals. And of course, there are also some research courses. And it is during this time that you are sent to the hospitals, to the clinics, to the health centers for you to hone some of those skills that you would have been learning in classroom. So what makes us unique? 
the program is pretty similar to a lot of the other nursing programs because there are some basic things that nursing programs must have. But one of the things that makes us unique is that we are a BPSO. And you're like, what is a BIPSO? Well, that's what I thought when I heard it first. But not to worry. BPSOs are healthcare and academic organizations selected by the registered nurses of Ontario to implement and evaluate the RNAO's best practice guidelines. What does this mean? It means that you are going to be getting best practice guidelines. We're teaching you using the latest evidence that is out there. So we became a BPSO in April of 2018. And of course, our school made history at the 93rd Annual General Meeting of Canada's Registered Nurses Association of Ontario because we became the first institution in the Caribbean to be designated as a best practice spotlight organization. And of course, while Omega Kappa, it's not attached to the BSCN program, the UWI School of Nursing is the home of the chapter. So that is just, just two of the things that make, that make us special. Our successes, and you would have heard some of my other colleagues speak about their successes. So the regional examination for nurse registration, you would see there I put, I've just put up for the last two, two or three years, you would see that we have had an increasing trend in our passes, very excellent passes. And you might be wondering, why do I have two grades there? Because we have two two campuses. And so, of course, those percentages represent the, the percentages of each of our campuses. And of course, you have heard my other colleagues talk about the Student Nurse of the Year competition. And of course, our Western Jamaica campus has been entering the competition. The Mona campus has entered the competition, but we have not entered in the last uh, two or three years, but of course our Western campus, and because we're one, we're pretty much one school, just separated by, by the division of, of the lines of the country. And our, our Western Jamaica campus, you will notice that they have entered the competition and they have been the school of the year for four consecutive years. Of course, cost of the program, I think some of my other colleagues said the pro their program was affordable. I'm just going to say that our program costs 5,000 US dollars per annum and I per annum and just indicate that this only covers tuition. So usually when students come to interviews, we guide you as to what some of the other things would involve that would cost you that would be of cost. So come join us. That is our you see our address there, HTPPS, you see there. And at, on that website, there is a tutorial video that walks you through the application process. And you can apply now. App applications are opened in November of each year. If you are not at the point where you can apply, well, then you can apply once you, once you are eligible. And you promise, you are promised that you will be in one of the Caribbean's number one university, It is in the top 2% in Latin America. And it is the world's, it is in the world's top 4%. And of course, I'm referring to the University of the West Indies, which is the home of the UWI School of Nursing Mona and Mona WJC. Thank you, colleagues, for listening. Thank you so very much, Ms. Walker. A very huge thank you to Dr. Bonamon, Brownstone Community College School of Nursing, Ms. Colleen Campbell from the Excelsior Community College School of Nursing, Mrs. Lilith Denton-Smith from the Knox Community College School of Nursing, Dr. Joy Little from the Northern Caribbean University School of Nursing, Mrs. Karen Jones-Fraser from the Caribbean School of Nursing at the University of Technology, and Ms. Melissa Walker, from the UWI School of Nursing, Mona. Thank you all very much. So I'm handing right over to Mr. Kevin Allen. There are a few questions and we're closing out our session. We thank you for your patience. Thank you students. Keep putting the questions if you have any more, but over to you, Mr. Allen. So you may put the questions out. I'm not sure if they were for any specific panelist or you will know what to do next, but over to you. Mr. Kevin Allen is a mental health nurse practitioner in the... I think it's Southern Region, Mr. Allen, and he's a member of our Omega Kappa chapter. Right over to you, Kevin. Yes, good evening, everyone. Pleasure having, being a part of this program this evening. 
And I'm saying I wished when 20, 20 odd years ago, when I decided to become a nurse, there was a program like this to educate me on what nursing is and the future that would have been ahead for me. So this is a solid platform for you, the students, to be engaging. So we want to ask the question this evening that is in the chat and as the questions flow, I will see how best I can cast off questions to our panelists, as well as I will quickly seem to answer some of those questions that comes directly to me as a clinician myself. What is the general cost for nursing for four years? The general cost is institutional based. So you'd have to go to the institutions and they would be able to quickly satisfy you with that details. It is based on course, it is based on credit, it is based on overall cost from an institution. So it's not one solid figure, it based on a number of factors, but your institution of choice, which all are represented here this evening, will be able to guide you accordingly. When do students begin going to the hospitals? Hold Normally, on one second, Mr. Allen. Uh, Mrs. Yes. Fairness, I saw your hand. Is it in relation to the first question? It is, it is. Okay. Uh, well, let's go um, ahead. And I had just put a link in the chat. Uh, Ms. Walker and I put together a video um, on YouTube that goes through the estimated cost of nursing schools in Jamaica. And we looked at uh, all of the schools that are represented here today. Um, it provides information on estimates for tuition, books, the uniform, et cetera. So I placed that link in the chat. You can have a look at that video. I think I also placed a link in the chat um, talking about the qualification. So just in case you want a refresher, you can have a look at that video as well. Wow, thank you so much. That is a proactive educator at work. All right, so when do students begin doing or going to the hospitals? Well, I know for our nursing schools, we try to get the students into the institutions of practice by second or third semester, first year, um, doing your basic bed making, vital signs, things like that. So it is earlier on, remember nursing is a hands-on profession. So the earlier we can get you in is the better it is for you. Another question here, do students get a chance to specialize in an area while doing the four-year program? Well, I want to quickly outline, as was indicated by the Caribbean School of Nursing, that is at UTEC and Montego Bay, they have one specialized program now, which is the midwifery, um, the BSc in midwifery. But outside of that, the Jamaica nursing program that have been one of the strongest courses in nursing practice is a generalist program. So it covers all the specialized areas, all the generalized areas, medical, surgical, psychiatry, medicine, intensive care, all the specialist areas are covered in the four years. So when you have completed your four years of nursing, you are a general registered nurse. It means that you would have touched all the areas and then you are able now on your own instruction and guidance from role models and individual that you would have met, you will be able to decide what will be your specialty? So like mine, I choose psychiatry. I choose mental health and wellness. Um, you have nurses who specialize in intensive care, accident and emergency, nurse educators. You can specialize in working in any area. IT, the Jamaica Defense Force, the Jamaica Constabulary Force. You are able, after completing your RN program, to do any area of specialization in and outside of nursing because you will be a rounded professional. All right. What is the name of the nurse 
that looks after mother and baby. Oh, you're talking about our public health nurses. So you have several categories. You have our registered midwives. You have our registered nurse, registered nurse, registered midwife, which is RNRM. That will take you to our public health nurses. And our public health nurses will go up to our nurse practitioners. And it continues. So you will interact mostly with uh, maternal and child health, it is called maternal, mother, child health babies will be the midwives, the registered nurse, registered midwife, public health nurses, and family nurse practitioners. Those are the persons you will find mostly on the front line working with our mothers and babies. Is there any difference when you are finished, depending on which school you may attend? No, there is no difference. What brings everybody on one foundation at one table is the RENR, -E the Regional Nursing Examination. When you have completed your degree at any of these prestigious and a noble institution. And I'm so glad this evening to be in a room where the nursing profession and nursing education is offered in Cornwall, Middlesex, and Surrey. Cornwall, Middlesex, and Surrey. So anywhere you are, you will be able to participate in nursing training. But reality is, there is no difference. Every student has to be successful in passing the RENR exam. Are you able to start working as soon as you graduate? No. There is graduation from your institution of learning, but there is the need to get your license with the Nursing Council of Jamaica. Are you able to start working? No. Because when you have graduated from your university or community college of choice, you will then have to pass the RNR exam registered with the Nursing Council of Jamaica. And upon receiving your licensure, then you will be able to practice. So you must be licensed by the Nursing Council of Jamaica for you to practice in the hospitals, health centers, or schools of your choice. Wonderful. Another question here coming in the room that says, does each school have a different uniform for their nursing students? Oh, yes. It is the pride and joy of all institutions to have their uniforms identifiable and different from others. But I realize the community colleges are almost the same, blue and white, but Exed, Brownstown, Knox, then you come to our universities, which is University of the West Indies. Uh, it is a candy stripe for the females for the University of Technology, it is also a different uniform. So it really a tradition over the years and our schools have maintained that. And that is a wonderful way of also identifying our students in the clinical areas. So when you go to KPH, University Hospital, Mandeville Regional, Maypen Hospital, you will see the uniforms and that will tell you which schools the students are from. All right, we know we're up on time, but let me see if I can grab a couple more questions here from the program. When can we start applying? As you heard from your institution presenters, applications are now open. Get online, put in your applications, and get the process started, all right? Are we able to live on campus? Yes, once the institution, the Mona campus, the University of Technology, Papine Campus, Western Campus, but Brownstone, Knox, Exed, 
NCU also, and I will say to I will say to the students, you are hearing me, Mrs. Lloyd. I will say to the students, you are able to find accommodation closest to you, because if you go to Knox and you are from, say, Kingston, there are citizens, the community have evolved to accommodate and to house the students. So there are residents there who have opened their homes to you to become a part of their family and to become a part of the school community. So accommodations can be provided wherever you are. And on the campuses, Mona, you take NCU, residents are available for applicants to the nursing programs. All right, so here we go. Is there any other question? I have one quick question, and that sorry, is to Mr. all. Allen, yes, go ahead. Sorry about that. Can you just um, allow the presenters to tell us about their applications and if it's actually open or not? Because I think the UE closed today, and each oh, wow. university probably has a time frame in which they open the applications. All right. So can our presenters say quickly when your application open or close, starting with Brownstown? I see okay. in the chat as here. Our, you, yes, you as our franchise of the University of the West Indies, it's the same time. So okay. um, applications would close today. So therefore, we are saying basically all the applications are closed. Madam Little? No, I think you need, uh, talking about UTEC and NCU, right? <laughs> Sorry. Right. Yes. Madam okay. Little, oh, oh, NCU, yes. are your applications your application. still open? Persons who prospected to enter nursing this academic year, the application closed today, but um, they, they can still apply. Um, no application is turned away, but in terms of processing for the upcoming school, the application closed today. Wonderful. So let me put a strength on that. The persons in this room today who would like to join the profession of nursing and start your training. Please prepare yourselves. Coming October, November of this year, put your applications together, prepare yourself, get your paperwork together. And on November 1, please drop your application so that 2023 coming, you can be in line to be a part of the training program in any of our community colleges or universities in Jamaica. Wonderful, wonderful. So I was quickly saying, I had a question that I wanted to ask going through these this evening. And I asked this question, I hope from you on our YouTube channel, there are some men in the room. I'm so glad this evening that there was another male present to share with me because 90% of the time I'm normally alone as I started my nursing training as the only male in my nursing program. Are you man enough to be a nurse? I think somebody could hashtag that for me. Are you man enough to be a nurse? And I hope there are some men here this evening who say, yes, I can. Quickly. While, while they're thinking about that, Mr. Allen, um, Mrs. Jones, Fraser, there was a quick question for you in the chat, if you'd be able to open your microphone and answer so that our student who asked over on YouTube will be able to uh, get oh, the yes. answer. Okay, sure. No problem at all. Um, as it relates to the person who has completed their registered nursing program, they would reapply to do the two two years to do to complete the midwifery program. So you are an RN. You would have registered as an RN, as Mr. Allen said. You you don't just graduate and you're an RN. You register. Then you have to reapply to do the midwifery um, two years, and it would be the similar situation if you entered as a direct entry midwife. You are now a graduate and you have registered with the nursing council as a, as a midwife. You can reapply and do two years to do your nursing. 
and of course any other of the graduate programs or post thank you so programs. much miss jones fraser from university of technology caribbean school of nursing i want to say here to our students engaged in this session this evening that completing your bsc is a platform for you to be a global influencer and to create an impact wherever you are the bsc is just the first stepping stone you can go to your masters your mphil your doctoral studies professor lecturer once you have completed your basic program i will say to you the sky is the limit and one thing is sure about nursing once you have completed the program and you have your nursing license you will never be unemployed once you have completed your rn program and your license with the nursing council of jamaica and you're practicing ethical standards you will never be unemployed once you're a nurse i want to extend although you cannot apply to work there's a there's a chat here quickly let me share this with you although you cannot apply to work as an RN after you complete the bsc hospitals do employ students who have graduated and are awaiting examinations they are employed as graduate nurses so here is a recommendation that you can seek employment at your hospitals as a graduate nurse awaiting your um rnr license so that's a plus right there and thank you miss colleen campbell for posting that hashtag men in nursing men nursing is a profession for you on behalf of the sigma theta tau omega kappa and this wonderful group of nursing educators and health professionals i want to extend my thanks to you for joining us this evening my name is kevin allen over to you mrs garik sly nursing to the world thank you so much mr allen i really just want to close off quickly and start by saying thank you to our students who joined us today we do hope that you have gotten some information you wanted to hear about that you've got your questions answered that just in case you had any other questions and you're not sure they got answered i will go right ahead and put our email address in the chat over on youtube and you'll be able to reach out to us as the omega kappa chapter and we'll try to respond it was very good to have had you with us this afternoon and just in case you know some other students who maybe it's not even students there are other persons who will maybe wanted to do nursing and they haven't. If you think that what we've shared with you is beneficial and they missed the session, it's going nowhere. It will be on the YouTube channel. You could always refer them to come right back and watch it again. I want to thank everybody who worked with me to make today the awesome reality it has been. I thank everybody from our presenting panel, starting with Mrs. Nita Chambers, who helped us to realize those of us who are talking to you today, we are nurse extraordinaires. I thank our two, our graduate student and our current student um, for sharing with us a little bit about what it's like and how they are going to help you to prepare once you get in. Mrs. Chisholm Ford, Mrs. Terry Nash and Mrs. Wade for highlighting the nursing council and the requirements so you will know exactly what to select. And if you've already selected your subjects, what you may need to go back and look at in order to be ready when application will open in November, because almost all the universities and schools are taking applications at that time. And then we want to thank all the presenters and educators from our schools of nursing. We are um, nursing excellence in show, in action, in thoughts, in deeds, and in words. And so you would have heard from different schools, but pretty much you would have realized that Depending on where you select, it makes no difference because we're all about nursing excellence and our programs reflect that. So we thank you so much, our educators, for sharing with us. We thank you, Mr. Allen, for the Q&A session. It gave some insight, gave a little more information um, apart from what was presented. And we are really happy to have had all of you joining me today. And we really want to close again by just saying thank you to our students. We encourage you to tell somebody 
come back to see, reach out to us. And if you didn't get it answered, then you could let us know if we need to do something else that will help you because nursing is really a profession of choice. Have a very good night. I think we need to reach out to, let me just get the name quickly over here as we close out. Um, Becky T, she was really the one person who put everything over here in YouTube. So we're going to find Becky T because she gave us the answers when we played our game at the beginning for boy, girl, animal, place, and thing. A big shout out to the schools who put their uh, mottos over here. So we had Fortis Infide et Opre. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. I didn't do Latin. So big up to Campion. We had Geisela in the house. Big up, big up, big up, Geisela. Born and raised and bred in Geisel. Myself and went to the high school. Creme de la creme. Um, school on the hilltop. We had through the stars, through difficulties. I believe that's Alvernia High School. And for any other school who may not have heard you were to share your motto. It doesn't matter. We thank you for joining us. And we thank you for listening in on our session. And we want to say, remember to think about, consider, is it that you are able to look at this profession as the one of your choice and where do you want to go? But it doesn't matter in the end because we are nurses extraordinaires. All right. Have a very good night, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us. Good night, everybody. Good night. You may just open your microphones and say bye. Have a good night. Everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody.